morning, y'all. It's Jesse. I wanted to jump on here. I'm on the mini transport this morning, and I'd like to address um, the importance of microchipping. Microchipping your puppies, microchipping your adults. Um, this week was a stressful week. Um, it started out Monday morning. I received a call from a vet office over 700 miles away from me um, that they, their scanner hit on an adult female bully. Um, and she was older in age. They were guessing probably, you know, five or six years old. And hit on my microchip. Um, I then went, you know, uh, trying to figure out who I had in that area at first just so we could, you know, get the dog into safety and get it, you know, get it out of their custody. Um, a lot of places will either just turn them over to animal control or, I mean, if it's a stray hold, I mean, really they give them about 48 to 72 hours and then we know what happens. So, um, Thankfully, they called me right away. A good Samaritan had found a bully on the side of the road in really bad shape. Um, and the vet office started running tests. And they said she was, you know, she just wasn't very good. She wasn't very good at all. She had labor breathing, lung issues. She was severely, you know, underweight. And hungry and lethargic and wormy and the list went on and on of things um and they described her of course you know when you're dealing with the vet office at first they were calling her red and then they were calling her it was just i was trying to get the description of the dog um and i was racking my brain because i could not figure out which client this was at first um so i went all day monday checking records, pulling old files, because, you know, this was an adult, this was an older adult by then, um, and finally, I, I got in touch with people I knew who I had in that general area of possibly what dog it could be, or of, you know, other breeders that could help me get this dog out of this emergency situation. So I was able to reach out to another breeder and um, she was able to reach out to her, a partner of her that was even closer in the area. And we had this dog out um, by the end of that afternoon, but it was still in really bad shape. I then went, received photos and videos of the dog. I instantly knew which dog it was. And I instantly called that person I had actually sold two sisters to this person as puppies. They went together. Um, I've done lots of good business with this person, and he was also a thousand miles away. So, where this dog, she ended up, um, you know, I've always had good business, like I said, with this, this other individual. Um, well, he had rehomed these two sisters. They had, you know, they had left his care and been rehomed. So I want to address that issue first. Anytime if you buy from a breeder, especially a pair and with the intentions of breeding, which I always ask their intentions, I knew what this person was doing. We had good business, you know, and I have always encouraged him over the years and helped him with any medical questions or, you know, pedigree questions, etc help this person, you know, really get started. Um, first red flag. When you rehome adults, always contact your breeder first. The breeder is going to have more of an investment in these dogs. Um, emotionally, you know, physically. I mean, we will always take our dogs back. If you're finished with the dog, and you're going a different direction, which a lot of us do over the years. Things change. I get it. Um, you add on more dogs. You decide to release some of the older dogs, etc. I always take my dogs back. Contact me. Contact me. I will arrange shipping. 
I'll get those dogs brought back to me. No big deal. We'll spay or neuter these dogs. We'll place them in the appropriate home they need to go in if they need to be only dog, etc. I have a better capability of doing that just because of my social media presence. I mean, I get calls weekly, <laughs> locally, or people around the world of me wanting them, me to take their dog. Either a rescue situation I get called in on, I have to go rescue dogs out of neighborhoods or apartment complexes that are chained back behind people's yards. I mean, I just get people reach out to me, and I'm thankful for that. I'm so thankful for that. I wish there was a hundred clones of me and I could do all this and, and, take, and take in all these dogs in these situations. But on my dogs especially, I will take them back. We have the room. We have the capabilities. We have the facility. I have the medical care and attention that we can get these dogs when they need it. And we're, you know, that's just what we do. I believe in lifetime breeder support. That is for support for you, for your program, what you have going on. But that's for my dog. You know, I'm such a sentimentalist. <laughs> I'm, so, I'm so sentimental, too sentimental, emotional when it comes to these animals. I go way back, way back to my teenage days with these bloodlines. Still have that blood running in my red dogs today, placed all around the world. I love them. I love them a little too much, a little too obsessed. But anyways, always reach out to your breeder. At that point, the breeder doesn't want to take them in, etc., etc. Then you find the right home yourselves. So that wasn't done in this situation, okay? And I wasn't told till much later that the dogs had been rehomed. Then I didn't have the information. I didn't know who these dogs went to. So when I reached out to this person and told them we had a dog hit on my microchip. Then I got the story. And then, you know, they gave him the runaround. They gave him a crazy story. They was sick. The people were sick. They went to the hospital. All their dogs magically got stolen. All the dogs were stolen. Six dogs, something like that, all together, of this person. So, that's just a red flag to me. Red flag, of course, me, I missed an FBI investigator. I'm gonna get down through there on the information. I just do, that's what I do. I go to the local garage sale site in that area. I go to the woman's page that had them. Multiple accounts, pages. I'm, I'm looking, I'm asking people in the general area about the individual. I'm running records on the people. Long story short, they got into the wrong hands. They got into the wrong hands of an individual that was known for being doing bad business. Hoarding dogs, taking dogs, getting in over their heads. This person obviously couldn't take care of these dogs. Either dumped them themselves onto somebody else, went and dumped them. You know, who knows? The dog got so sick that they went and dumped it somewhere. I, I mean, there's no telling that. We'll, we won't get the truth at that point, you know, because the people are back paddling. The back, people are back paddling. Never contacted this, you know, the original owner to say, hey, these, these dogs are missing. Never made a post about their dogs missing, being stolen. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. And this dog wound up another, you know, 45 minutes away from the city that they were already supposed to be in. So it's just, it's a bad deal. It's a bad deal. And you just have to be careful and watch who you go on out to, who you go place adults out to, you know. And if they have the best intentions at heart. And it's hard. It is hard to do because I've had people show up to my own place, my own property, in their Sunday best attire and tell me all these goals and plans and dreams of all these things they're going to do. And then turn right around and do wrong by me. Do wrong by my dogs. You know, so I know it's hard. However, always reach out to your breeder first, you know. Because they're going to have the best intentions at heart for the dog. And you're going to go replace or rehome an adult. So this was Monday. And then all week long, you know, we were able to get this dog out. It was in bad shape. It was struggling to live. And then by yesterday, it passed. 
dog passed. You know, and it's it's just terrible. It's so sad. You know, and I'm just thankful for the breeders that did help me in this situation. And the dog was in good hands at the end, knowing people were fighting for it and getting it medical attention. You know, and then unfortunately had to give it a proper burial. And it's just, <laughs> it's just sick. And it makes me so angry. You know, and. And now to know that the sister's still out there, which I have a bad feeling. I immediately knew the sister was gone. I just knew, you know, I felt it at that gut feeling. Um, but who knows, you know, we could have a miracle of or my microchip could get hit on again, or we could get her out. But, you know, I'm encouraging you all as breeders to microchip your puppies. I seriously pay, I think it's 130, 145 bucks for a box of 25 microchips. You know, that's gonna do a litter or two for, you know, at least two litters for you or more. Um, it's registered to you automatically to your program. Um, you give the individual, the new family a little slip. They are supposed to get online and plug in their stuff. Nine times out of 10, that never happens. People just don't do it. The dog just stays microchipped to me register to me um this is the second time in the last oh six years that one of my dogs has hit the system and that's pretty good because i have a lot of dogs and i produce a lot of puppies the first time was a holiday july 4th of fireworks and an adult bully got out wound up in you know um overnight into the rescue shelter situation i was immediately contacted in the morning i was there by you know 10 a.m meeting the owners because i knew which dog it was the owners got him out i even had backup paperwork if needed they didn't need it boom dog was fine safe haven't had another one in years ever hit the system until this crazy situation on Monday. You know, and like I said, I'm, I'm just thankful she was in hands at, at the end of her life of people that were actually caring for her and fighting for her to live. I'm thankful for the Good Samaritan, whoever it was who stopped and picked up this dog and turned it into the vet. You know, and let's just do better. You know, let's do better, y'all. Let's follow these deals out to the end. I mean, this dog was four or five years old. I hadn't seen her since she was a puppy, you know. But contact your breeders. Stay in touch with your breeders. And then breeders, keep good relations with your clients. It makes me sick to go online and see somebody else doing a lie. Or somebody people beefing. Or he said, she said. And this and that. You have living, breathing animals out there they have a heartbeat they have a conscience <laughs> they're alive and you you place these animals with these families how are you going to go fight with the families or the breeders or your co-owners etc you have to keep good relations we have live animals we're dealing with we need to make sure they're healthy and happy and good good homes and you don't want to be seen beefing online all day long running right your mouth People aren't going to want to work with you. People aren't going to want to reach out to you. Your clients are going to get scared or whatever. Or be, you know, you just people just get in their heads. You know, you've got to keep good relations. It's a clause I put in my contracts. We'll take our dogs back. It's a clause that I say about our relations, our business relationship. We're here with you to the end. Something doesn't work out, we understand. Deaths and families happen. Relocations happen. People get arrested. People get sick. You know, people lose their spouses, etc. We'll take the dog back in. We'll take it in at any time. We'll microchip that dog. We'll know where it's at so it never ends up in a shelter situation. You know, I'm not contributing to the shelter population, you know, once it leaves my hands. So let's microchip. Microchip your your stock you know let's keep them safe and that's what I got this morning you know because I've been tagged a couple times and I'm just you know been spoken of just real little about the situation because I was really hoping it would turn out better 
and we still have another dog out there. That's where I'm getting at. We still have another sister um, that hopefully somebody can step up and do the right thing or she's, you know, gone on. So thank y'all for listening. Any questions, reach out. I'll be happy to share my microchip information with you. But let's just do better by the dogs and by one another. Thank you for listening. Bye-bye.